Bisyate de Shmai, we're going to learn Yuvamas Daf Dalad. We're going to start six lines from the bottom of Daf Gimel Amud Base. And we'll just recap at the top of Daf Gimel Amud Base, the Gemara asked a question Minohan Namila, what is the source in the Pchumish and the Psukim that if Shimon dies without children and one of his wives were one of the 15 Aroyes to Reuven, Shimon's brother, that Reuven cannot do Yibum with that wife of Shimon, nor with any other wife of Shimon who is called a Tzara, a co-wife, a rival wife of an Erva to Reuven. Reuven cannot do Yibum or Chalitza for that matter with, with the Erva or the Tzara's Erva. And the Gemara says, because there's a pasuk says Isha el achoi solo sikach litzreir legalu servos oleo bechayel. The pasuk says, and the Gemara we discussed on Daf Gimel Amud Beis at the top that we learn out from the psukim that if it's an achoi Isha, which is one of the fifteen ervos, if Shimon was married to the sister of one of Reuven's wives, then Reuven cannot do yibum to that sister. It's achoi Isha even when there's a mitzvah of yibum, even if Shimon died without children. And now there's a mitzvah of doing yibum. Normally, to marry a brother's wife is seriously also. It's called Aishas Ach. However, the mitzvah of yibum overrides Aishas Ach and says that do do yibum. But if besides for Aishas Ach, it's also a chois isho, it's also a, a sister of his wife, then Reuven cannot do yibum to, that, to, to the, his wife's sister or with any other wife of Shimon. And that's what we learned from the Postuk of Oleo and Litzreir. And now the Gemara is going to say that if we needed a posok to say that you cannot do Yibum when Shimon is married to one of the 15 Aroyos of Reuven, then Reuven cannot do Yibum, it must be that without the posok we would have contemplated the idea that you can do Yibum. And we have to understand why that would be true. Why would we have thought and entertained the idea that Reuven can do Yibum, which means to get married with one of the 15 Aroyos, why would, what would have allowed him to do that to the point that you need a special pasuk to say that indeed he cannot do it. That's what we're going to discuss here. From Daf Gimel, it's going to take us all the way till Daf Ches. So we're going to start a sentence now over here on Daf Gimel Amud Beis. Then we're going to take a deep breath and we're going to continue the sentence on Daf Heil Amud Beis. And then we're going to take another deep breath and finish the sentence on Daf Ches Amud Aleph where we're going to come to Imaskana. Says the Gemara, Tama, the whole reason, the source that Reuven cannot do Yibum with an erva of his, one of the 15 Aroyos, is the cost of Rachmon, is, is the cost of Rachmon, is because the Torah says, Oleho, the extra word in the Posuk that we, or the Gzeri Shava that we learned about before. Ho'lav hochi. If we wouldn't have a special Posuk to say that Reuven cannot do Yibum in such a case, Hava Amina, I may have thought, Achois Isha Mia Bemis. He can do Yibum to the sister of his wife, which is one of the 15 Aroyos. My Tama, why would that be true? Says the Gemara. And now the Gemara is going to introduce this famous sugya, the topic of Asei Doicha Loisase, where one mitzvah overrides another mitzvah, where a mitzvah that tells you to do something overrides a mitzvah that tells you don't do something, which is a famous rule in the Torah, Asei Doicha Loisase. And the Gemara is going to assume that since there's a mitzvah Asei Du Yibum, there's a Loisase, there's an Iser to marry in Achois Isha, an Erva. And we're not now talking about the regular erva of Aishas Ach, a wife of a brother, because that Yibum, the virtue of the mitzvah of Yibum clearly overrides that. Here we're talking about other Aroyes, Achois Isha, for example, a sister of one of Reuven's wife. If Shimon was married to that sister and then Shimon dies without children, Reuven cannot do Yibum with his wife's sister. And we needed a posuk for that. So it seems without this posuk, maybe the mitzvah of Yibum would override the Avera, the Isser of marrying Achis Isha. And then the Gemara is now going to discuss, would that rule of Asei Doi actually have told us that he can do Yibum? And that would explain why we need a posuk to say you can't do Yibum. Because if the rule of Asei Doi wouldn't explain that, we're going to be left with a question, if there's no way of overriding the Issa of Achis Isha, of marrying a sister of a wife, then we wouldn't have thought that you can do Yibum. So why do you need a posuk to say you cannot do Yibum? Says the Gemara, Maitama. 
can we not assume that we say, Osi ase, the dochi lois ase? An ase comes and overrides the lois ase. The ase of doing yibum, yuvama yovayaleo, overrides the issa of Yisrael achoisa loisikach. Says the Gemara, no. When do we use the rule of That's That's just a regular loisase. If a regular ase is, is um, so to speak, clashes with a the loisase, then the rule is ase that ase overrides the loisase. However, that's only loisase grada, but loisase shiesh boikoros mi dochi. If the loisase is not just a regular don't do this avera, it's a loisase that is punishable by chorus, and all 15 aroyes mentioned in the Mishnah are all punishable by chorus. Some are even worse than chorus, that they have um, skila or strafa, as we've discussed, but they're all punishable by chorus. So uh, uh, we never find, or let's assume at this point, we don't find assay being doicha loisa seshiesh by chorus. And if so, we would never have dreamt of the idea of the mitzvah sase of yibum overriding the loisa seshiesh by chorus of achois isha. And if so, we would never have dreamt that Reuven can do yibum with achois isha. So why do I need a pasuk to say he cannot do achois isha? That is the question of the Gemara, and it's going to be quite a while until we actually get an answer to that. And the Gemara continues with the question, Vasu, and by the way, loisase gereida, just take the regular rule of ase doicha loisase, a regular loisase, a loisase that's punishable by malchus, by lashes, not by chorus. Minol on dodochi, what would be the source to the whole rule of ase doicha loisase? And now on Daftalad, we're going to try and establish where do we know about this rule that we all know about called ase doicha loisase. Says the Gemara, Tichsiv, it says in Sefer Devorim, and it's important that we remember that this isn't Sefer Devorim, we'll soon see why. In Parshas Kiseitse, it says as follows. It says one posuk that speaks about shatnas. Shatnas means you're not allowed to wear a garment where the strands of wool and linen, linen is a fiber that comes from the flax plant, that wool and linen that are sewn together, that are tied together in a garment, is called shatnas, you're not allowed to wear it. So it says in the Pasuk, Loisilba shatnas, don't wear shatnas, Temer upishtim yachtov, wool and linen together. And the next Pasuk, immediately after that, which is a Pasuk that seems to be out of place here, because the Pasuk, the next Pasuk is going to discuss the mitzvah of tzitzis. The mitzvah of tzitzis gets discussed in Parshas Shelach, not in Parshas Kiseitse. But this Pasuk comes in and says, Gdilim taselecha, you should make a twisted fringes, which is what we call tzitzis, al arba kanfis ksuscha, on the four corners of your garment, ashet chasabo, that you are covered with, that you are adorned with the garment. So you've got what we call smuchin, you've got a posuk, two psukim next to each other. The first posuk that says, don't wear shatnas, the second posuk that says, wear tzitzis. Loisilba shatnas, and then gedilim taselecha, and we'll soon, v'omer beloza, Rabbi Loza said, smuchin min atayra minayin. We don't yet know exactly how you learn asay doicha loisase from here, we're going to get there soon, but it's clear that it's learned from the fact that the two psukim are smuchin, are written close to each other, one after the other. And what, smuchin min atayra minayin, where's their remez to this concept that we can learn halochas from, by virtue of the fact that two psukim are written in close proximity of each other, they're written next to each other. Shunemar, it says in a pasuk in Tehillim, smuchim lo'ad lo'ilam, that they are joined together forever, asuyim be'emes v'yashar, they are made with truth and upright. So you see there's a concept of smuchim, that when two things are joined to each other, that, that we have relevance to that. So these two psukim of lo'isil ba'shatnas, and then g'dilim ta'aselecho, it seems to teach us that Asay do Yichaloisase, we'll soon see how. Vomer of Sheishis, Omer of Belozo, Mishum of Belozo ben Azariah, it was said in the name of Belozo ben Azariah, Minayin leYevomo. This is going to be another place that we find the concept of Smuchim. How do we know that if a Yevomo, we're learning Yibum, if you have a, a, a one of Shimon, Shimon died without children, and his wife is now a Yibum, has to do Yibum with Ruvain, Shimon's brother. But what happens if Ruvain is Mukashkin? He's somebody who's got lots of boils. If this Ruvain has got full of boils, and, and Ruvain's widow says, I don't want to marry Ruvain. I can't marry somebody full of boils. So we don't block her claims. We allow her to 
to stand up for what is important to her. She cannot marry Reuven, and instead of doing Yibum, we force Reuven to give to Chalitza, which is instead of Yibum. Where do we know that from? Because it says in the Pasuk, In one Pasuk it says you should not put a muzzle on an ox, Badishai, whilst it is threshing. The Samichle, and the next Pasuk, it says in the Pasuk, If you've got two brothers who are together, which means two brothers from the same father, which is the psukim of Yibum. So you see that you have a posuk of don't block up the mouth of a shayr, and then it says Yibum. So from here the Gemara learns, Rabbi Lozab and Azari learned, that in the case of Yibum, make sure that you don't muzzle, you don't block the claims of a woman who says, I cannot do Yibum with this person because he has boils. So we see there that the concept of two psukim being written next to each other, and we see there's relevance to smuchim. Vomer of Yosef. Rav Yosef says, Afilu leman deloi dorish smuchim ba'alma. There are those who say that we don't darshan the concept of smuchim in the rest of the Torah, in Sefer Bereshis, Shmois, Vayikra, and Bamidbar. However, the Mishnah Torah, in Sefer Devarim, which is where we have the Shatnas and the Tzitzis, and where we have the Yibum, then Dorish. There, everybody agrees we do say that Smuchim is relevant. The Horeb Yehuda, for example, Rabbi Yehuda, Ba'alma, Loi Dorish. In the rest of the Chumash, we'll soon see how we know this, but Rabbi Yehuda doesn't hold of the concept of Smuchim. However, he himself, who Mishnah Torah Dorish, in Sefer Devarim, he does say Smuchim. Um Ba'alma Minolan de Loi Dorish. How do you know that Rabbi Yehuda, in Sefer Bereshis Shmois Veikro Bamidbar, he doesn't learn Smuchim? Titania, because we learned in a Brisa. This is a Sugi in Sanhedrin. Ben Azai Oimer Ben Azai said, Neymar, it says in Sefer Shmois. The Pazuk says, Mechashefa lo one is not allowed to keep alive a Mechashefa, a sorceress. Lo she has to be put to death. Venemar, and it says in another Pazuk, also the next Pazuk, Kol sheichevim behema moisyumos, anyone who's immoral, who lies, who sleeps with an animal, moisyumos, they, they get put to death. And Samchu inyan loy, the two Psukim, one of and one of Kol Sheikh Vim Behemo are written next to each other to teach us that Ma Sheikh Vim Behemo Biskila, in the same way as in the case of Sheikh Vim Behemo, we know that it's the, the, the punishment of anyone who sleeps, who lies with a, an animal is Skila. We're going to learn that in Sanhedrin Dafnun Gimel. Af Machshefa, so to Machshefa Loisachaya Biskila. Machshefa is also Chayev in Skila. That is what Ben Azai says. Omale Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda said to Ben Azai, Vachim Epneshe Samchu Inyan Loi Noitzil Zel Eskila. It says Machshei for Lois Achaya. We know she's going to be put to death. But to get the stringent punishment of Skila, you're going to determine that just by virtue of the fact that it's written next to Kol Shoichav and Behemo. Smuchim, that Smuchim is not, we don't learn Smuchim. So we see here clearly in Sefer Shemois that Rabbi Yehuda does not learn from Smuchim. Elo, Rabbi Yehuda does say that the Machshefa is Chayev in Skila, but not from Smuchim. He learns it from elsewhere. Me'elo oiv v'yidoini. There's a different Pasuk. There's a Pasuk that says that a type of sorcery called oiv and yidoini, bichlal machshefim hoyu. They were included in the bracket of sorcery. Veloma yotzu. Why is the oiv and yidoini singled out if it already says machshefa leisachayo? All sorcery is prohibited and punished by death. Why is Oiv and Yidoini singled out? Lahakish lohem, in order to make a hekosh, to learn from them, v'loi malachot, to teach you that, and this is a rule, which is one of the rules of the Torah, of Torah Shabal Peh, how we learn psukim, that kol dovo shahoyo bechlal, v'yotso min haklal, l'loi l'lamid al atzma yotso, el l'lamid al haklal kulo yotso. It's something which many of us are familiar with. We mention this every morning in, in before davening in davening. Loim lachot to teach us that ma oiv v'yidoini. In the same way as oiv v'yidoini b'skila, we know that oiv v'yidoini are punishable by skila. Af machshefa so to any type of sorcery b'skila is punished by skila. So Rabbi Yehuda doesn't argue with Ben Azai as to what the punishment is of of 
it's skila. But whereas Ben Azai learns it from Smuchin, Rabbi Yehuda learns it out from the fact that Oyven Yudoini is singled out. So we see here clearly Rabbi Yehuda does not hold of Smuchin in Sefer Shmois. How do you know that Rabbi Yehuda himself does hold of Smuchin in Sefer Dvorim? Ditnan, as we learned in the Mishnah, Noise Odom Anusas Oviv, or the, the Tanakama here hold, that if um, a person is allowed to marry Anusas Oviv, which means if his father forced a woman to have relations with him, then he didn't marry her, but they, they lived together forcefully, then that's called Anusas Oviv. Umafutas Oviv means that the father seduced this woman to have relations with him, or Anusas Benoi, or Mefutas Benoi, or if his son did Oynas, or if his son was Mefateh somebody, then in those cases, even though a spouse of a father or a spouse of a son is severely asa, it's one of the arayos. But since here it was outside of marriage, and therefore the Tanakhama say that no Adam. It's not called uh, in marriage. It's it's not called eishes of yicho ervas eishes of yicho. It's not called a wife because eishes is only when there's issues. It's only when there's kiddushin. There was no marriage here. That's the Tanakhama. Rabbi Yehuda Oyser. Rabbi Yehuda Oyser banusas oviv or mefutas oviv. That when it comes to a somebody who his father was ma'anus or mafate, then it's osa. Vomer of Gidlo Marav. And Rav Gidl said in the name of Rav, what was the source of Rabbi Yehuda that Anusas Oviv and Mufutas Oviv is Osir? My Tamad Rabbi Yehuda. Dichsiv, it says in a Posuk, and this is a Posuk in Sefer Devorim. It says there, in one Posuk it says, Lo yikach ishes ishes Oviv, v'lo yigale knaf Oviv. It says that a person is not allowed to marry his father's wife, or lo yigale knaf Oviv, any knaf of his father, he's not allowed to marry. And what does it say? What does that mean? Knaf, shera oviv, lo yegale. Which means that anybody that the father revealed, exposed, the son is not allowed to marry. The question is, maybe that's just talking about a wife. How do you know it's talking about oinus and mefate? Umimai de ba'anus oksiv. How do you know that this is talking about anusa of his father? That, that, that it's osa from the pasuk, lo yegale knaf oviv. Mi ilave de kro. Because of a different posuk, the posuk that says before that, before the posuk of Loikach Ishes Ishes Oviv Loigalik Naf Oviv, it's that's in the first posuk in Perich of Gimel. But the end of Perich of Base it says Venosan Dirsiv. It says Venosan Hu Isha Shoichiv Imo La Via Naro Chamishim Kesev. It's talking about if somebody did was Maanus, he forced a girl to have relations with him. He has to pay the father Chamishim Kesev fifty silver coins. Veloisi Elisha and he has to marry her. Tachas Hashino because he hurt her. He cannot divorce her his whole life. So the Pasuk before is talking about Oynas. It's explicit. The Pasuk afterwards that says is the Pasuk after a Pasuk that speaks about Oynas. So this, from this Smichus, then after that is the Pasuk of Oviv. So from here we see smuchin that the pasuk of lo yegale knaf oviv is talking about oynas that anusas oviv is included in lo yegale knaf oviv and is osa. That's why Rabbi Yehuda says that Rabbi Yehuda osar be anusas oviv and mefutas oviv. So you see clearly here that the Rabbi Yehuda learns smuchin and this isn't sefer devarim. So you see that in sefer devarim we learn everybody learns smuchin even those who don't learn smuchin in the other places. Says the Gemara Verabonon, the Tanakama who say that somebody is allowed to marry Anusas Oviv and Mefutas Oviv, what do they do? They, we assume they also hold of Smuchin. There's a Smichus here, there's written together. Lo Yigale Knaf Oviv is written after the Psukim talking about Oynas. So why did the Tanakama say that he is allowed to marry Anusas Oviv? Verabonon, what are they going to do? Says the Gemara, you have a Somichle, if it would be right next to each other, the words Lo Yigale Knaf Oviv and the Psukim of Oynas, then Kedukah Omrus. Of course we would say Smuchin, and I would agree with you, Rabbi Yehuda, that, that it's Osa. But it's not completely next to each other. Because the last Pasuk of Perikhov Beis indeed is talking about 
is talking about uh, oinus. But the first pasuk of Perek of Gimel says, Lo yikach ishes ishes oviv. A person is not allowed to marry his father's wife within marriage. And only then it says, Lo yigale knaf oviv. He's not allowed to marry knaf oviv, which is from where we learn anusas oviv. But the words, Lo yikach ishes ishes oviv, are written in between. So it's not completely samuch, it's not completely joined. In that case, we don't say smuchin. So what do you, so then according to the Chachomim, who say that lo yegale knaf oviv doesn't mean anusas oviv, because they say the son can marry anusas oviv. How do they explain, what does it mean lo yegale knaf oviv? It doesn't mean you're not allowed to marry your father's wife from marriage, because it already says lo yekach oviv. So which woman is not anusas oviv and mufutas oviv, is not his wife, and nonetheless is Asr? Says the Gemara, Bashimeres Yovam, Hakosov Medabir. The Posuk is talking about Shimeres Yovam. If Shimon died and he had a wife, not an erva to Ruven, he had a wife. Now Ruven has to marry, has to do Yibum. So this woman, Shimon's wife, the widow, is, if she obviously they died without, he died without children, this widow is now Shimeres Yovam. She's reserved to Ruven to do Yibum. So all the while she's reserved to Ruven to do Yibum, and that stays that way until one of Shimon's surviving brothers didn't do either Yibum or Chalitza with one of Shimon's wives. Up until that point, the, the wives are considered Shemeres Yovam. They're reserved for Yibum. So Shemeres Yovam, if, if Ruven's son wants to marry this wife of Shimon, then he can't because at this point in time, this woman is reserved for Ruven, for his father Ruven to do Yibum. And that's called Lo Yegale Knaf Oviv. Beshimeres Yovam Akosov Medaber Velaver Olov Bishnei Lavim. And in order to, why do we need the, an extra posuk Lo Yegale Knaf Oviv? In order, because we already know. There's another posuk that says explicitly that a, a woman who is who is reserved, so to speak, to do Yibum, is not allowed to marry anybody else. We saw that in the Pasuk. It says in the Pasuk, But this is just to have another love. That a woman who marries, who's supposed to do Yibum and marry somebody else, has two lavim. A regular love of And if she marries one of the Yovams, let's call him Ruvain's son, then you've got the extra love of lo yegale knaf oviv. So that's the Rabbonon. And now the Gemara asks, Uba Mishnah Teira, my Tama de Dorish. We just now saw that Rabbi Yehuda learns Smuchin in Sefer Dvorim from the fact that it says, Venosan Isha Shoichiv Imo, Lavia Naro, Hamishim Kesef, Vesomichle next to it, Loikach Ish, SHS Oviv, Loigale Knaf Oviv. So from there, Rabbi Yehuda learns that that Osar ba Anusas Oviv, Umufutas Oviv. But, so we know, we see that Rabbi Yehuda was Deirish Smuchin in Sefer Dvorim. But what made him come to that conclusion? There must have been some place in Sefer Dvorim where Rabbi Yehuda found a, a source that it must be. There's no choice. It must be that there's Smuchim. We saw before already in Sefer Dvorim, you've got, we saw that Loisil Bashatnas Gdilim Taselecho, and the Gemara explained that's because of a Smuchin. But we have to know what made Rabbi Yehuda, what did he see that forced him to come to the conclusion that there must be smuchin in Sefer Dvorim? Says the Gemara, If you want, I can prove it to you from the fact that it's muchach, which means that the very fact that it's there, it must be telling us, why did the Pasuk write this Pasuk next to this Pasuk? It doesn't belong here. The fact that it's here and it doesn't belong here must be telling us that it's because I want you to learn something from the fact that it's next to where it is next to. Or we learn it out from a drasha that there's something, an extra word. And if there's an extra word, that tells us that use this extra word as, so to speak, a link or to teach us that you can learn something from the fact that it's next to something else. And the Gemara is going to explain. That let's take this case here that we're busy with now. With loyegale knaf oviv, which is next to the case of the psukim that speak about oynus. So it's muchach, the imkein lichtavei rachmona gabe arois. This posuk of loyeg, of loyikach ishes ishes oviv, loyegale knaf oviv, why is it not written together with all the other arois in the Torah? Why is it over here in Devarim Perichov Gimel? It doesn't belong here. So if it's here, it must be in order to teach us something that it's close to the posuk before it that speaks about oynus. Vi boys eima. 
or Mishum de Mufna. There's something about this Pasuk which seems to be superfluous, so to speak, and we know there's nothing superfluous in the Torah, not a single letter, and the fact that something superfluous is teaching us Smuchin. De Mufna, de Imkein, Lichtei Rachmona lo Yikach Ish, es Eishes Oviv. If it would mean that a son is not allowed to marry his father's wife, in marriage, then just say the first half of the Posuk of Perich of Gimel Posuk Aleph, Lo Yikach Ishes Eishes Oviv. Why does the Posuk carry on? Velo Yigale Knaf Oviv. Lomoli, why do I need the extra words Velo Yigale Knaf Oviv? It must be to teach me that you want to know there's something new here, there's something else, even that means a type of a father's wife, but it's not a real wife, but somebody the father's had relations with, which is also to the child. What would that be? Says Rabbi Yehuda, smuchin, see what's written close by. The posuk before it, at the end of Perekhov base, speaks about oinus. So this posuk is teaching us, Vlaigale Knaf Oviv is talking about oinus. So through this smuchin, Rabbi Yehuda learns that osar, that a person is not allowed to marry, anusas oviv or mefutas oviv. Shma minola fnuye, these extra words are over, so to speak, they are there to teach us that anusas oviv is osa. Says the Gemara, the Gabetzitzis Nami. Let's take the Gemara right at the top of the Daled Omedalef that we learned from the Pasuk. I say, Doi Chaloisa say, where did we learn that from? From Loisil Bashatnas Gedilim Taselachop, which is two Psukim in Sefer Devorim. They are close to each other. Over there also, we learned Smuchim. Iboy Yisayim Mishum Demuchach, Iboy Yisayim Mishum Demufna. Over there also, I'll show you that there's something about that parish posok that shouldn't be there at all. It doesn't belong there. If it's there, it's Muchach. It must be teaching us Smuchim, that through the Smuchim you can learn something. Or Demufna, there's a word that is superfluous there that's teaching us the Smuchim. You want to know what, what about the psukim there are, are teaching us, are, are out of place and therefore teaching us smuchim. When it says in the posuk, first it says, You're not allowed to wear a garment which has shatnas, which is tzemer or pishtim yachtov, wool and linen together. The next posuk it says, In Parshas Kiseitze, G'dilim ta'aselecha, al'arba kanfis, k'suscho ashet chasebo. Where tzitzis? Well, the parish of tzitzis is, is in parashas shlach, not in parashas kiseitze. What's it doing there? So the very fact that it says gedilim taselacha in parashas kiseitze and it doesn't belong there, it's muchach lemai hilchas akos Why? What is what is it coming to teach us that it's written here? It must be to tell us smuchin that there's something you can learn from the connection between the is of wearing shatnas and the chiyuv of wearing tzitzis. That's as far as the muchach. And Mishum de Mufna. And there's also something which is superfluous there, which teaches us the same thing. Mechtuksi Kosav, it already says in Parshus Kadoshim, it says in the Pasuk, A garment of Kilaim, which is Shatnas, which has in it a mixture of wool and linen, you should not put on you. That it already says in Parashas Kedoshim. And then we've got this Pasuk in Kiseitze that says, Loisil Bashatnas, don't wear Shatnas. Lomoli. Why do I need the Pasuk to say Loisil Bashatnas in Parashas Kiseitze if it already says, Ubeged Kilaim Shatnas lo yale olecho in Parashas Kedoshim? Shema min olafnuye. It must be teaching us that there's something superfluous there to teach us that you can learn Smuchim. What are we going to learn from the Smuchim? That's Asay Doi Chalais Asay. The Gemara is going to discuss that later. Says the Gemara, why are you saying that the words Loisil Bashatnas, Temeru Pishtim Yachtov in Parashas Kiseitse, are superfluous because it already says it in Parashas Kedoshim? No, Hanam Mitzrich Tzrichi, I need both Psukim. The Ikos of Rachmona, because if you'd only have the Pasuk in Parashas Kedoshim that says, Ubeget Kilaim Shatnas lo Yale Olecho, the Ikos of Rachmona lo Yale Olecho, just that Pasuk in Kiseitse, Hava Mina, I may have thought, called Derech Halo Osa Rachmona. That it's only also to wear shatnas when it's in a form of halo, when you're wearing it as a normal way of putting the garment on you. That means anything which is on you, as long as it's on, it's fine. And even these people who are wearing, who are draping over themselves garments, which are making them hot in the middle of the summer. And... They, the reason that they are, they are draping, they are using, they are wearing these clothes is just to advertise that they're selling clothes. But there's shatnas there. So uh, how would you know 
that, and so I may have thought that it's also going to be Osir. Any type of wearing of the garment is Osir. Any type of putting the garment on you, even if it's just for the sake of advertising, is not even comfortable. It's not, there's no pleasure in wearing it. And that's if it would have just said in the Pasuk, Ubeget Klaim Shatnas Lo Yale Olecho. That's why it says Kos of Rachmon, it says in Kisei, it says Lo Silba Shatnas, the word Levush, which is a wearing, a, 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 a Levush, a Levisha, which means wearing it as one wears normal clothes. So, the, and that's a word, the word Tilbash, wearing, it doesn't say in Parashas Kedoshim, it only says in Kisei, it says, to teach us that Dumya de Levisha, that the Isra of Kilayim is only when it's similar to a regular wearing clothes. De Ispeano, that he's got some pleasure from it. Because, and if you're going to wear warm clothes in the summer and you're wearing it just for advertising purposes, but you're not having no pleasure out of it, then, then, then indeed there's going to be no Isra of Kilayim. So, so the Posuk in Pasha's Kisetil, Isil Bashatnas, needs to teach us you only, you only transgress Shatnas if it's Levisha. So it's not if it's not mufna, then then what you said before that iboy say misha mufna, the Gemara is asking it's not mufna. Because of Rachmon lo silbash, and now the Gemara is explaining why do I need the pasuk in Parshas Kedoshim if it says lo silbash shatnas in Parshas Kisait? Say why do I need to beget kilaim shatnas lo yale alecho in Parshas Kedoshim? Because of Rachmon lo silbash, if we only say the pasuk in Kisait, say have a minute. I may have thought davke levisha do nofish haniyaso. I may have thought that only when it's a proper wearing where there's a lot of pleasure, then it's also. But if you just drape a garment over you, which is not a regular, the way you get regular pleasure from clothes, loy, I may have thought in that case it's not Osir at all. That's what it says. As long as you're getting pleasure from it, even if you're not actually wearing it, it's just over you, it's also Osir. So you see, so the Gemara has now proved that I need both Psukim. So nothing is Mufna. If it's not Mufna, what does it mean? The Gemara says that the source that Rabbi Yehuda had, that you, ser- you learn Smuchin in Sefer Dvorim, is from the fact that Shatnas, the words, the Lusilba Shatnas, which is written next to Gedilim Taselacha in Parashas Kiseitse, is Mufna, is superfluous. It's not superfluous. Answers the Gemara, Imkain Lichtev Rachmona Lusilba Shatnas. Because if, if what all you want to do is from the, from the Pasuk in Pashas Kiseitse is to learn that it's got to be derech levisha, derech wearing, which means you have pleasure from it and not just putting it over you for, without any pleasure, then that's fine. So that's the first three words of that Pasuk. Leisilba shatnas, don't wear shatnas. Why do you have to add in temer upishtim yachtov, wool and linen together? So if, why does it say those words? Those seem to be superfluous because that's what shatnas is. And therefore, it is superfluous. Why does it say the words Tzemer or Pishtim Lomoli? Mechta, Kosav, Ubeged, Kilayim, Shatnes, Lo Yale Olecho. We know in the Pasuk in Parshas Kedoshim, it already says, Ubeged, Kilayim, Shatnes, Lo Yale Olecho. And what is Beged? Because the truth is, Kilayim, Shatnes just means there's two species, two, two different types of of uh, materials and threads together. We don't really know it's Tzemer Opishtim, wood and linen. So you, you can't say the words Tzemer Opishtim in Kisaitz are superfluous because it doesn't say Tzemer Opishtim in Patras Kedoshim, says the Gemara, no. Because you forgot, we well, didn't forget, but we have to mention the Tonne de Be'elio, the Tonne de Be'elio. Tonne de Be'elio says that the virtue of the word Beged, the word Beged itself, a garment, when it doesn't tell us which garment, when it just says Beged, it always means Tzemer Opishtim. Mechta Kosav, it says in the Pasov, in Parshas Kedoshim, Ubeged Kilaim Shatnas, Loyale Olecho. The Tonne de Beri Bishmol and Tonne de Beri Bishmol learned, Hoyl Venem Rubatayra Stam Begodim. In many places it says Beged. It talks about clothes and doesn't tell us which types of clothes. Uparat Lecho Akosov Beechod Mem. And in one time in the Torah, in the parish of Nagoim, in the parish of Tsoras, there it says explicitly, Tzemer Upishtim. It singles out that that beged means which beged? Wool and linen. So we learn from there, afkol tzemer opishtim. We learn from there that every time it says beged in the Torah and doesn't tell us which type of garment, it's always wool and linen. So if so, tzemer opishtim, the cost of rechmon lomoli. So once it says the word beged in Parashas Kedoshim, it doesn't need to tell us tzemer opishtim because beged always means tzemer opishtim as tonadabay 
the Rebbe Shmuel said, and therefore the words Tzemer or Pishtim in Parashas Kiseitze are superfluous. Shema min olafnuye, to teach us that from these extra words, to teach us that you can learn smuchim between shatnas and gedilim tasilacha. Says the Gemara, no. Vakata Idstrich, I need the words Tzemeru Pishtim explicitly in Parshas Kiseitze, Lusil Bashatnas, Tzemeru Pishtim, even though knowing that Shatnas is Tzemeru Pishtim, I know that from the word Beged in Parshas Kadoshim, I still need the words Tzemeru Pishtim in Parshas Kiseitze, and they're not Mufna, because Sol Kodai Tuchamina, I may have thought, Ha'aloh, don't forget in Parshas Kadoshim, what does it say? Lo Yale Olecho. It doesn't say Halavush, it just says Halo, which is just putting it on you, even if you're not wearing it normally. The pleasure you get from having a cloth on you is less than the pleasure you get from actually wearing the cloth. So I may have thought that Ubeged, the word Beged, which always means Semeru Pishtim, Ubeged Kilaim Shatnas Lo Yale Olecha. When it comes to Yale, to just putting the clothes on you, not for advertising purposes, to give you pleasure, but it's only the pleasure of having the garment on you, but you're not actually wearing it properly. Maybe only there the restrictions of Kilaim are limited to Beged, which is Tzemer Pishtim. Ava Levisha, I may have thought that if you're wearing the clothes with so much pleasure, the Nofish and Yos, you have lots of pleasure, you're wearing it regularly, then I'm, which is the posuk of Leisilba Shatnas, I may have thought Coltre Mini. Maybe there, the Shatnas and the Kilayim there is any two species. And it's not limited to Beged, which is only wool and linen. And Coltre Mini, Osarachmona, maybe the Torah said any two types of, of materials of threads in a garment are Osa. Therefore, Kosov Rachmona Tzemer Pishtim. That's why in the post that speaks about Lois Silbash, the wearing of Shatnas, it has to say explicitly Tzemer Pishtim. So then the words are not Mufna. If they're not Mufna, how do you know Smuchin? Says the Gemara, Imkain Lishtoi Kromine. If it would be true that the words Tzemer Pishtim are teaching us that even by Levisha, that's only Osir Kilaim, if it's wool and linen, Tzemer Pishtim, if that's indeed why the Pasuk is saying it, Lishtoi Kromine. Then don't say anything. Don't say Temeru Pishtim. Vitesa, and you're not going to make this mistake of thinking that by Levisha any two species are Osir. No, because Tesi, Shatnas, Shatnas, me Allah. It says in Parshas Kedoshim, Ubeged Kilaim, Shatnas. There it says Beged. Beged is always Temeru Pishtim. Indeed, it's only talking about Loyale Olecho. The Pasuk in Kiseitse, Loisilba Shatnas, it also mentions the word Shatnas. We would learn in Gzeru Shova, Shatnas, Shatnas, that Shatnas is always only Tzemeru Pishtim. So again, the words Tzemeru Pishtim are superfluous. And since, and since it's superfluous, therefore, we know that it's Mufna, and that's how Rabbi Yehuda learns that, that it's, it's Mufna for Smuchin. Says the Gemara. The Tana Dubey Rabbi Shmuel, according to what we just learned now, according to Tana Dubey Rabbi Shmuel, that says that Beged always means Temer Pishtim. And the reason that we need to say Temer Pishtim explicitly by Inkiseitse is indeed Mufna. So let's recap now. According to the Tana Dubey Rabbi Shmuel, when it says in the Pasuk, U Beged Kilaim Shatnas Loyale Olecha, we know Beged always means Temeru Pishtim. So why does it say Temeru Pishtim in Kiseitse? To learn Smuchim to Tzitzis Gdilim Taselecha. Those who argue with Rabbi Shmuel and say that Beged doesn't necessarily mean Temeru Pishtim, then the words Temeru Pishtim in Parshas Kiseitse are not Mufna, because we need the Temeru Pishtim to tell us that Kilaim is and Shatnas is only Temer Pishtim and not any other, not any other sp um, two species. So according to those who argue with Tana de Be'er Bishmoel, then you don't have a smuchin that tells us that you can learn something from and with Kilaim and Tzitzis. So that's now Machleikas, the Rabbonon and the Tana de Be'er Bishmoel. Can you learn from the connection of Kilaim and Tzitzis? Now, what did we learn? The top of Davdala Domadalaf. What did we learn from the smuchin of Kilaim and Tzitzis? So the Gemara said, How do we know Asei Doicha Loisase from the fact that it says, Loisil Bashatnas Gedilim Taselacha? Now, how do, what, what is that teaching us? What's that smuchin teaching us? So it's teaching us like this Loisil Bashatnas Semeru Pishtim Yachtov. Normally, you're not allowed to have Shatnas. Wool and linen are not allowed to be are sewn together, tied together in a garment. You should make yourself tzitzis. What is that telling us? 
that you're allowed to make tzitzis even though the tzitzis are kilaim. How can you make kilaim? The Torah says you're not allowed to wear kilaim. The answer is that since we have this smuchim that says that regarding tzitzis you're allowed to wear kilaim, this is the source of asei doichaloi saseh. That the mitzvah saseh of gedilim taseloch, of wearing tzitzis, overrides the loi saseh of loi silba shatnas. And from this smuchim, in Sefer Dvorim, we learn but that's only if it's Mufna. And it's only Mufna according to the Tonah Dabei Rebbe Shmoel, as we saw. So now we're saying, the Tonah Dabei Rebbe Shmoel, so now that we know that according to Tonah Dabei Rebbe Shmoel, the Temer Pishtim is superfluous. So you can learn Smuchim. What do we learn from the Smuchim? That Tzitzis are allowed to be Kilayim. Even though the garment is linen and the threads are wool, and normally that would be severely also is shatnas, tzitzis you're allowed to. So now the Gemara is asking, Tama, is it only the, because of the reason, the cause of Rahman at Tzemer is it only what we just said now from the smuchin between Tzemer Pishtim and Gedilim Taseloch, that that's the source that Asei Doi and you're allowed to put, make tzitzis with Kilaim? Ha'olav hachi. But if you wouldn't have these smuchin, then kilayim, but tzitzis, have a minna de osarachmona, I would have thought that you're not allowed to wear kilayim tzitzis. That means, is this the one and only source that you're allowed to wear kilayim on tzitzis? Voxiv, it's, that's, it's a big challenge that, because in Parshas Shalach, in the Parsha of tzitzis, it says in the Apostle, Daber el bnei Yisrael v'amart alem v'osu lohem tzitzis. Make tzitzis al kanfei bigdem, on the corners of your garments, l'day reisom v'nosnu al tzitzis hakonof and you should hang from the corner of your garment the threads of tcheles, which is a, a tcheles is a colored dye, a specific dye that we don't know today what it is, but it's called tcheles, and you should put tcheles onto the threads, and Vatona de Beri Bishmol, and Tona de Beri Bishmol understood that kol begodim temero pishtim him, as we saw before. Tony de Beir B'shmol learned that from the fact that it always just says Beged without telling us what it is. And in one place by Tzoras it says Tzemer Opishtim. Beged always means, means Tzemer Opishtim. So when it says that you've put tzitzis on big day hem, on your clothes, we know that you, put, you do put tzitzis on clothes of Tzemer Opishtim. And what do you put as tzitzis? That means you have a clothes of either wool or linen, that's beged. Beged is tzemer upishtim. And then you put threads. What do you color the threads with? With tcheles. What type of material do you, do you paint, do you dye with tcheles? The Torah says you should dye the tzitzis, at least one of the threads, with tcheles. The tcheles amrahu. You always dye which type of material gets dyed with treles? Wool. How do I know that it's wool threads that get dyed with treles? Who told you that just because one of the threads are dyed with treles, it means it's a woolen thread? You learn out from the Posok. Midasheish kisna treles amrahu. Because it says about the big day kuhuna, it mentions there that there's a whole list of clothes that were brought. And most of three of the lists are actually colors. A red color, a treles color, one of them is a material, bod, sheish, which is linen. So if one of them is linen, so we know that the others are not linen. So it's clear that those, the clothes of the Kohen Godel, which we're talking about, besides for the last one, which is linen, the others are wool. And one of them is treles. Treles are gomon v'toilas shoni. Those three colors are not sheish, they're not linen, so they are wool. So you see that tcheles is attributed and associated to a woolen thread. So if it says, so if it says in the pasuk that you put tzitzis on a big dayem, and we know that beged is wool or linen, so that means that a linen garment, you put tzitzis on it. Tzitzis is one of the threads of tcheles. Tcheles is always put onto wool, so you've got a woolen thread of tzitzis on a linen garment. So even without the smuchin in Parshas Kizaytse, from the fact that it says that you put tzitzis on big dayhem, which is wool or linen, and you put tcheles, which is wool, you already see explicitly that, that tzitzis overrides kilaim. Why do I need the smuchin? Says the Gemara Itzrich. We still need the smuchin. I may have thought, 
we're soon going to see that Rava learns that from the words hakonof, it teaches us min konof, that there's a restriction, which means you have to put on tzitzis, but the tzitzis, the threads have to be from the same type of, same species, the same type of material as the cloth itself. So I may have thought that since Rava says that the strings have to be the same material as the clothes, then you're not allowed to put kilaim. We'll soon see. If it says tcheles, tcheles, you'd only have to put on a, a tcheles painted onto a woolen thread, would only be on a woolen garment, and then there's no kilaim. So if you learn hakonov is min konov from this type of the, of, the, of the corner of the garment itself, there's no kilaim. And that's why we need the smuchin to say you're allowed to do kilaim. So I may have thought, could the Rava like Rava said? The Rava Romi, Rava seemed to ask a seeming contradiction. Ksiv, it says in the Pasuk that we mentioned by Tzitzis in Parshas Shlach, Hakonov. It says, V'nosnu al Tzitzis, Hakonov, Pseut Acheles. What do we learn from Hakonov? Min Konov. The threads always have to be the same spe- type of material as the garment. In which case there's never Kilaim. Kilaim means that the thread and the garment are a different type. One is wool, one is, one is linen. No, Rav says in one pasuk it seems to say hakonof min konof uchsiv, but on the same token it says in the pasuk tzemer upishtim that the strings are allowed to be, or, or the strings are tzemer upishtim, and this interestingly enough is learned from the two pasukim we're talking about where it says lesil bashatnas tzemer upishtim yachtov wood and linen together gedilim taaseloch you can put. You put strings, tzitzis on. So from the fact that it says the words tzemer upishtim yachtov together with gedilim taaseloch, it seems that threads are only wool or linen. And not only wool or linen, the threads can be wool or linen anytime. So it seems not like min hakonov. Min hakonov means that any type of garment, it means the way we're learning at this point, min hakonov means that any, any garment, it doesn't matter what it's made of, the strings have to be the same materials as the garment. But from this, from the fact that it says Semer Opishtim together with Gedilim, it seems that threads of Tzitzis are only made of wool and linen. But if I have a silk garment, then from Hakonov it would mean have threads of silk for Tzitzis. But from Temer Opishtim it seems that Tzitzis can only be wool or linen. Okay, so how do we reconcile these two Psukim? Says Rava, Temer Opishtin Poitrin Bein Beminon Bein Shaloi Beminon that to you, if you're using threads of either wool or linen, then they can be put on any garment, not necessarily shatnas. You, not necessarily you can put wool on a linen garment or linen threads on a woolen garment, but you can put woolen threads or linen threads on any garment which is not shatnas. For example, a silk garment, you can put either wool threads or linen threads or silk threads. But shar minin, but any other type of thread which is not wool or linen, but minon poitrin, they only are kosher on a garment which is the same type as those strings. For example, on a on a silk garment, you can have either woolen threads or or um, or linen threads, and you can have silk threads. But silk threads can only ever be used on a silk garment, Mamina Konov. On an, any other garment besides for a silk garment, you cannot use threads of tzitzis made of silk. Sha'ar Minin, any threads which is not wool or linen, but mean on poetry, they can be used as tzitzis on the type of garment which is the same as them. Shalai Bamin on Einon Poitrim. But what do we see from here? There's a concept of hakonof min konof, that the threads you put on a garment has to be the same materials as the garment itself. So you don't have any kilaim. So even though we said before that from big day means garments of wool, garments of linen, and we asked a question that if you have treles and treles is on a woolen thread, then you see clearly from the posuk of the tzitzis that you can have tzitzis of kilaim. So we asked a question according to Tonah Debeir B'Shmoel, why do I need the smuchim to say that you can have kilaim by tzitzis? Says the Gemara, no. Because Rava says, hakonof min konof that the threads have to be the same type as the garment, and there's no kilaim. So from this posuk of tzitzis within, in, of, in and of itself, you do not have any source that you can have kilaim, and that's why by tzitzis. And therefore, Tanu Deber Shmuel needs the smuchin to teach us, and you can have kilaim but tzitzis. Ask the Gemara, you're answering Tanu Deber Shmuel with Rava? Well, Tanu Deber Shmuel, let's lead the Rava. Tonah de Beir they learn that beged always means only wool and linen. 
So from when it says that you put tzitzis al kanfei big day, and according to Tanur B'tavir B'shmoel, tzitzis are only ever required on a woolen garment or on a linen garment. Rather, clearly says that any other type of garment you can wear tzitzis. He says that woolen linen threads, they exempt any type of garment. But uh, threads of any other type of garment only exempt a garment, uh, threads of any other type of material only exempt a garment of that material. So you see that Rava clearly says that bigdeim means any type of material, not only wool and linen. So Tonu Deber Shmuel doesn't hold of Rava, so how can you use Rava to explain Tonu Deber Shmuel? Says the Gemara, no. You're right that Rava and Tonu Deber Shmuel are arguing as to whether garments other than wool and linen are chayev and tzitzis. That's true. But nonetheless, it could be that Tonu Deber Shmuel agree with Rava that the word hakonof would tell us it has to be threads with the same species as the garment. So, big dam, according to Ton de Bishmoel, is either wool or linen. Hakonov would tell us that on a woolen garment you put woolen threads, and on a linen garment you put linen threads, and then there's no kilayim. Therefore, they need smuchim to say that you're allowed to have kilayim on tzitzis. Itzrik says the Gemara, so could I, to Chamina, I may have thought, Kidiyukub the rover, that he learns the word Hakonov like rover. Hakonov min konov. And this is what the Torah would be telling us. Because according to Ton Dever Bishmoel, it says, Big Dehem is only clothes of Tzemer and Pishtim. Hakonov says the, that the strings, the tzitzis, have to be the same species as the garment. A woolen strings on a woolen garment, linen threads on a linen garment. And then there's no kilayim. And then we've got a question. So what's the treles? Treles we said before, treles is on wool. So how, how are you going to, so if you say that wool and th- wool and threads, like Rava says, can be put on a silk garment, there's no problem of kilayim. But according to Shmoel, Tanu de Shmoel, that the only two garments you use is wool and linen, and you have to put tzitzis, and you said that tcheles is always on wool, you're going to have an issue here. So you're going to put the wool and threads on a linen garment? What, what's going to be? Wool, the wool and thread, that's kilayim. We just said now, according to Tanu de Shmoel, he's going to learn that there's no kilayim. And you put threads uh, you put or pishtim le pishtim, but if you put a if you put linen threads on a linen garment, we said that tcheles, which is the dye used for one of the strings of the tzitzis, is always on the wool. How are we can understand that? Says the Gemara ki avi does tzemer. If you choose to use woolen strings on a woolen beged, tzemer le tzemer, then tzavei. Only then you should dye it with tcheles. Avol tzemer le pishtim or pishtim le tzemer. Loi, but to put woolen threads on a garment of linen or linen threads on a garment of wool, that's never allowed. And if you, you put linen threads on a garment of linen, then you just don't, you don't dye it in treles, because treles is only on wool. So I may have thought that Rabbi Shmuel learns like this, and therefore, there's no, and therefore, you don't, you never have, you never have kilayim. So then there's no source that you have kilayim in tzitzis. Kosav Rachmon, and therefore, that's why Tana de Bebe Shmuel needs the smuchin of, that we saw before, that Loisil Bashatnas and Gedilim Taseloch to tell us, therefore, Kosav Rachmon, Tzemer Upishtim, that you, then this teaches us you do not need Mimin Hakonov. I would, Tana de Bebe Shmuel would have learned like Rava to say Hakonov means Min Hakonov. You put woolen threads on a woolen garment and linen threads on a linen garment, and only the woolen threads get dyed. Says the smuchin, no. You can have kilayim on tzitzis, and even when you have a linen garment, you don't say hakonof min konof. On a linen garment, you also have a woolen thread, which is dyed treles, and you can have kilayim. Da filu tzemer le pishtim, or pishtim le tzemer. We don't say hakonof min konof. Indeed, according to Tan Deberi Shmuel, only a wool or linen garment is chayev and tzitzis, and you can put either wool or linen tzitzis, and the woolen threads, are dyed with treles, and we have no issue with 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 kilaim, because that's what we learned from the smuchim, and there's no issue of kilaim in the context of tzitzis. So that's this Gemara. And now the Gemara is saying, Tinach Latona de Beir Bishmol. All this is good according to Tona de Beir Bishmol, who learns that Temer or Pishtim is superfluous because the word Beged tells us, always tells us, that is Tzemer or Pishtim. So the word Beged is superfluous to teach us. Smuchim to teach us you can have Kilayim in Tzitzis. But Le Rabbonon, 
Minolhu, according to the Rabbonon, who argue with the Tanah Deber Bishmol, and they say that the word Semer or Pishtim, that it says by Shatnas in Kiseite, is not superfluous because they don't learn like Tanah Deber Bishmol that Beged Kilaim of Parshas Kedoshim means woolen linen. So I need the woolen linen, the Semer or Pishtim in Parshas Kiseite to teach us that. So it's not superfluous. If it's not superfluous, then I don't have a Smuchim. If I don't have a Smuchim, I don't have a source for Asei Doi Cholei So according to Tanah Deber Bishmol, we have a source for Asei Doi Cholei from the fact that the Mitzvah of Tzitzis overrides the Issa of Kilayim. According to the, those who argue with Tanah Deber Bishmol, we do not have a source for Asei Doi Cholei We're going to have to find another source for Asei Doi Cholei and we're going to learn that, Bezaz Hashem, in the next Duff.